This is a demonstration of transacral fibula surgery done for high grade spondylolisthesis also known as the Bowman's procedure. This is a 57 year old gentleman who had developed non-union at L5-S1 following instrumented fusion done two years ago. He presented with severe disabling low back pain of one year duration without any neurological symptoms. CT scan showed halos around both L5 and S1 screws indicative of loosening. A standard subperiosteal exposure was done from L4 down to sacrum taking care not to enter the laminectomy membrane. To get you oriented the top of the screen you can see the sacrum and in the bottom of the screen you can see the L4 lamina. To begin with all four pre-existing screws were removed. These were found to be extremely loose and came out easily. On testing for mobility, we found a frank non-union at the L5-S1 junction. Larger diameter screws were inserted in the pre-existing L5 pedicle screw trajectory. These were 7.5mm screws. And we found that the insertional torque was quite good on the left side, but not so good on the right side and therefore we inserted uh, in addition uh, bilaterally L4 uh, pedicle screws uh, cranial. Next uh, the laminectomy membrane uh, was carefully dissected off the superior border of the S1 lamina. Here I am using uh, a combination of sharp and blunt dissection uh, to identify the superior border of the S1 lamina. Once that is done, uh, a 30 angle curet is used to gently detach the scar from the edge of the bone. This has to be done extremely carefully uh, so as to not uh, damage the dura which is just underneath the bone there. This area is actually notorious uh, for uh, dural adhesions and extra precaution has to be taken to ensure that uh, no dura is adherent to the uh, underlying bone there. Using a Woodson elevator, one can uh, confirm uh, that the dura has been adequately separated off uh, the bone uh, so that the next uh, step uh, can proceed. Next, a 4mm kerosene punch uh, is used to initiate the laminectomy of S1. The intention is basically to remove adequate uh, bone uh, all the way down to S2 so that the S1, S2 disc uh, can be exposed. Here uh, I am identifying the S1 pedicle which is my uh, landmark. Uh, the S1 nerve root is right below it and I am going to extend the laminectomy uh, uh, cordially. continue to take down uh, bone, uh, confirm that the nerve root is free, uh, dissect off all the adhesions. Uh, this is extremely important uh, uh, so as not to injure the dura. Here I have uh, speeded up the video a bit to show the laminectomy. Uh, as you go further down uh, caudally, the lower extent uh, of the laminectomy should be around the S2 level. Uh, you should be able to see uh, the shoulder of the uh, S2 nerve root uh, adequately to uh, uh, initiate uh, uh, the trajectory for the transsacral uh, fibula. Here now you can see uh, the area between the S1 and the S2 nerve roots. Uh, the dural sac uh, is uh, retracted medially using a derico nerve root retractor. The S2 uh, nerve root is retracted caudally using a Penfield 4. The entry point is the S1 S2 disc. This is easily identified in the lateral C arm projection using a Penfield 4. The entry point is slightly off center and not exactly in the midline so as to prevent excessive retraction of the dural sac. A close watch is kept on free running EMG monitoring. A 3 mm burr is used to make a divot so that the guide wire does not slip. 
then an ACL guide wire is drilled across from the sacrum into the L5 body. The guide wire should be directed towards the anterior superior corner of L5 and this is done under fluoroscopic control. Both uh, anterior posterior and lateral projections are mandatory at this step. Make sure that uh, you have adequate room around the guide wire to accommodate a 10 to 12 mm ACL ruler. Once this is done, a similar length ACL guide wire can be used to judge the length of uh, the fibula that would be required. Approximately 7 cm of fibula has already been harvested by my colleague. We then proceed to give a cylindrical shape to the fibula. An ACL sizer is quite useful for doing this. Mithlin blue is coated on the inner surface of the 12 mm ACL sizer. When the fibula is inserted through this sizer, parts of the fibula that need trimming are stained blue. Availability of uh, adequate length of uh, fibula is confirmed before proceeding. In preparation for the reaming, make sure you have adequate room. Ensure that there are no dural adhesions. Free running EMG should remain quiet during retraction. A 12 mm ACL reamer is used under fluoroscopic control over the guide wire. The guide wire should be long enough so that it can be held back while drilling to prevent inadvertent anterior migration of the guide wire. Whatever bone graft that can be salvaged from the field uh, is preserved for future use. Once adequate length is reamed as judged on the C-arm, the reamer is gradually withdrawn. Once again, all the bone graft from the hole created by the reamer is salvaged. The length of the hole is measured using a ball tip probe. In this case, it is 60 mm in length. The L5-S1 disc space can then be accessed through this hole and can be curated as much as possible using an angled curette under fluoroscopic control as shown. The hole is then packed off using gauze to prevent continuous oozing of blood from cancellous bone. The correct length of the fibula is cut using a saw. This uh, end is the proximal end which is fashioned in an oblique uh, manner. This is done so that this end of the fibula will sit flush with the opening created in the sacrum. Any rough edges uh, from this end are then polished off using a fluted burr. And correct sizing is confirmed. Bone graft is packed into the L5-S1 disc space as accessed through this fibula strut hole as much as possible. The fibula strut graft is then placed in this hole and tapped down gently using an L punch. As the fibula is advanced, it transfixes the sacrum and the L5 vertebral body. The proximal end of the fibula should sit flush with the posterior wall of the sacrum. Any bony projections above this level can be nibbled off. Next, the surgery moves on to the remaining part of the instrumentation. The S1 screws are inserted such that they transfix the L5 vertebral body on either side. This is done under lateral fluoroscopic guidance and care is taken that the trajectory of these screws does not interfere with the inserted fibula. To protect these screws, S2 iliac screws are then inserted. Using a pen field, the first dorsal sacral foramen is identified. Entry point for this screw is between the first and second dorsal foramina as shown in the figure. The trajectory is directed approximately towards the greater trochanter and around 30 degrees anterior from the floor. 
AP and the teardrop view confirms accurate trajectory as shown in the Siam images. 7.5 mm by 80 mm ILAC screws are placed on both sides. Siam image is used to confirm accurate placement of these screws. Posterolateral lateral bony elements are decorticated from L4 down to S1 for posterolateral lateral fusion. A mixture of uh, locally harvested autograft and allograft is placed uh, over the decorticated surfaces. Final x-rays uh, before closure show good alignment and accurate placement of implants. These are his immediate standing post-operative x-rays and he went on to fuse quite well. By 6 months he had solid fusion at L5-S1.